Hello all, uh, welcome to the webinar on verifying your conformance, to conformance against OBIE. So today we are going to talk about uh, how WSO2 open banking fits in with the conformance aspects. So we're first going to talk about how the OBIE ecosystem works and the testing facilities provided by OBIE uh, to facilitate uh, verifying conformance. So the webinar will be uh, twofold. First of all, I'll give a brief uh, introduction on the OBIE ecosystem and give, a, give an overview on the basic actors and the components that is at hand. And after that, I'll talk about the conformance certification service that was uh, recently established by OBIE and how they are facilitating the con different conformance tests for the different categories. And we'll run through each of these categories and see how the process goes. So why, why do we want OBIE conformance? So at first thought, uh, I guess everyone thinks that API compatibility and complying with the core PSD2 rules and enforcing that uh, would be apt. But in this case, where OBIE and the UK application, unlike some of the other PSD2 specification, there is a lot of moving parts and other actors in play, like the directory. Because of this, uh, OBIE wants to make sure that all of the all of the parts interplay properly, and they are up to standards and they are uniform uh, uh, throughout all the clients, all the TPPs, and all the ASPSPs. The ecosystem is tightly knit, so I'll give an overview on how the ecosystem looks. So first of all, uh, we have the ASPSPs, uh, which is uh, which we provide TSP support for. And with the ASPSPs and TPPs, those are two uh, words that we are familiar from the PSD2 context. That's the bank and the third party. And in the OBIE space, we have another acting play called the directory. So that is uh, acting as the identity provider and provides different discovery services and like application management services. So in this case, uh, instead of directly the TPPs talking with the ASPSPs, the ASPSP, both ASPSPs and TS, TPPs will be talking with the directory to discover the different banks and the different TPPs and provide identity and validate uh, the authenticity of all the TPPs and the ASPSPs. So because of this, we have to be, because of this, there is many parts from in the OBI ecosystem. These are the main three actors and that would be involved in the testing process. So the conformance certification service, uh, this was put in place by OBIE, Open Banking Limited, also known as Open Banking Integration Entity. And uh, they have provided many services and portals to get the open banking effort moving forwards, uh, apart from the PSD2 specification and the RTS. So the conformance uh, certification service is one of the services that is offered by OBIE and it is and it's the specification compliance part that we are interested in so they give different tools and guidelines to self attest the implementations and after these uh, tests are done you can get a certificate from OBIE telling that we we are compliant to the specification and what is important to highlight is is conformance certification service and after this I'll talk about uh, which the pillars of conformance these are all bound by version so if you get the conformance certificate for a specific version then it will be valid for that version itself so let's uh, move on to the pillars of conformance so we have four main parts that is uh, given cert certification we have the security profile conformance, which I think uh, is nothing new and it has been there uh, from pretty much the start. And next off coming in new is the functional conformance suite. And the functional conformance suite is uh, another great task done by OBIE to make sure that the API schema and the API functionality remains uniform with the specification and the other banks. 
And next off, we have customer experience guidelines, which was also there from the beginning. So this is ensuring like the functional conformance and the security conformance, making sure that the back end is uniform through a, to a, throughout different implementation, that the front end is also similar uh, throughout the implementations of different banks and different TPPs. And the latest conformance uh, guidelines were uh, given for uh, called operational guideline conformance. So that is basically talking about the ASPSP or the TPP and how they are interoperative with uh, how, how the analytic goes with OBIE and their communication and how they implement these pillars of conformance. That's guideline for that. Guidelines for that. So security uh, profile conformance. Uh, this is one of the most important parts of any PSD2 interface, which is security because you are talking with live banking data. And the security pro profile conformance mainly talks about the PSD2. In PSD2 context, the SCA portions uh, and the RTS. So the in specific specifically this uh, conformance suite will look at auth 2 and oidc flows the transport security and also dcr will be uh, coming in the future currently it only does the auth and oidc flows also another important note is uh, this tool is open source and uh, under mit license so this makes sure um, make sure that anyone can actually download this tool and do their own implementation. So OBIE, OBIE has made most of the documentation public. Therefore, anyone can go ahead and test uh, test out an implementation. So how does this fit in with uh, WSO2 Open Banking? WSO2 Open Banking pretty much provides conformance out of the box. And we have given specific documentation regarding how you can configure the Open Banking product uh, to be PSD2 and in this case OBIE specific uh, compliant. So in this case, uh, since our PSD2 open banking product caters to different specifications such as uh, next gen PSD2 and STET, uh, we have given documentation regarding how in the UK context API security can be configured for running the conformance suite. And what we realized is uh, from most of our clients and from most of our customers and ourselves, that the test suit configuration is the hardest part, the configuring this test suit. So we've given an easy guide on how to configure that as well. So I'll give a quick demo on the conformance suite uh, since, it's, uh, since uh, it's easy to set up. And I'll run through a bit of the documentation because it is uh, an arduous process to get this set up. So I'll quickly run through the configuration and show how this, uh, how the conformance suite uh, comes to play. Okay, so so this is the OIDC conformance suite. Uh, it was initially developed by FinTech Labs. And how this works is, first of all, they give you a basic uh, skeleton configuration and we have this uh, documentation regarding how you can populate that uh, skeleton configuration with certificates and the information that is necessary. If I just quickly skim through the configuration, uh, first off, it has uh, where to discover your server, uh, the client configurations, and uh, here is the signing key uh, for signing purposes and the mutual TLS certificates in line as well. So this requires a couple of tools, and you need to transform the traditional PEM certificates into this JSON format. And we provided examples on how to configure that. So let's uh, look at the test that is offered by this testing suite. So it, uh, give, it, it has the basic FAPI, financial API test, the FAPI read specification and the read write specification. But in this case, for open banking, we have a couple of specific tests, uh, such as uh, OB with mutual TLS test plan and private key and mutual TLS hold of key test plan. So I'll quickly execute uh, this mutual TLS test plan. I need to I need to tell you that this is running on a local machine, so we are not integrated completely uh, with OBIE. 
So when you ta uh, start a test, it will automatically run through the process. Oh, give me a moment. I'm having a bit of a communication issue. Let me restart this and see. So this will, so as you can see, it will give you different interactions. It's uh, not fully automated. So in this case, uh, it's asking for us to do a browse interaction. So let's press the visit button. And it will run through the open banking flow. So we'll sign in. This is the, this is the ASPSP, the bank's portal uh, for approving, con uh, approving the consent. So let's select a dummy account that we have configured on this uh, instance. And as you can see, it gets redirected back and the test keeps uh, running. And in this case, this test runs in the perspective of two third party providers to make sure that uh, there is no scope creep and uh, there is no certificate problems. So we have another browse interaction, which we can go through again and select an account. So we completed the test. And uh, as I said, this is running locally. So some of the tests do not uh, validate out as we are not integrated with the OBIE. That is the basic process of uh, running the test suit. And in this case, uh, for or gaining conformance and uh, getting the accreditation from OBIE, you generally just run the test suit and then export uh, export the test suit logs and send it to OBIE. So, uh, so that was a basic demo on uh, how the test suit works. So we'll run back to the slides. So functional conformance. Uh, this is a fairly new uh, new conformance suite that OBI introduced, I believe, a couple of months back. So one of the pro one of the problems that the security conformance suite had was it ha it doesn't validate uh, the API aspects. So it just runs through the basic con consent and hybrid flow, and afterwards uh, it just spits out the results. But one of the other, other important parts is the API specification, where there is a lot of ambiguity when a lot of uh, different implementers are reading through these specifications and implementing them. And finally, OBI has answered and given us a functional conformance suite that allows uh, each implementer to run these tests and make sure that the implementation is on par with the specification. Uh, currently, I don't have the conformance suite uh, set up on this computer. So I have a screenshot currently here testing with uh, OB 3.1. Uh, one thing that I need to notice, this is only working with version 3.1 APIs for now. So it can test the payment and transaction APIs and the payment in account and transaction, sorry, my bad, account and transaction API and the payment initiation API. So customer experience guidelines, uh, this plays in with uh, the ecosystem aspects of OBIE. Unlike a traditional API interface where everything stops beyond the implementation of the backend and the authorization server, OBIE has gone forward to make sure that the customer experience, the end user, the end consumer's experience is uniform between each and every bank and TPP as these different banks and TPPs will have different interfaces. And uh, they want to make sure that the customer is not intimidated or alienated by these interfaces and want to make it as smooth as possible. And how they do that is through a set of guidelines. So here's one of the examples that uh, they have offered in the guideline document. I've linked it below. And what happens is it will give you different examples and uh, little guidelines with like CX considerations and UI considerations. So it will show what are the important fields that you need to show and which order it should be processed. Therefore, whatever the bank, whatever the TPP it may be, the end user, whenever switching from different banks or different TPPs, will have the same, uh, same user experience uh, on the open banking platform. So that is a uh, in the 
in uh, context of WS2 open banking, we have given a lot of consideration to the consumer experience guidelines. And when we are designing the front end aspects of the WS2 open banking solution, the base solution, we have incorporated the consumer experience guidelines. So our implementers, our customers can base it off that and do all their customizations on top of that. So that's the customer experience guidelines. So operational guidelines uh, doesn't tie into us much because uh, we are a TSP, but for ASPSPs and TPPs, operational guidelines make sure that the uh, again, they have a consistent experience through the ecosystems between different TPPs and different ASPSPs. Uh, as just by, con as because, uh, so we talked about, prior we talked about three of the conformance pillars. You can comply to that and then just, uh, uh, just keep that basic conformance. But you need to do a little bit of groundwork and there is a bit of housekeeping to be done. So in that case, the operational guidelines make sure that the organization that is in charge of uh, running that ASPSP or TPP make sure that the performance and the uh, performance and the uh, regulatory updates are being uh, reflected on their implementation. So that's the basic idea of the operational guidelines. And if we look at uh, what what's uh, inside in the operational guidelines. Uh, they normally contain guidelines on availability and performance. So API availability is a big part. Uh, they want to make sure that the ecosystem uh, doesn't, uh, there, is, there is no TPP or SPSP interruptions. And if there is an interruptions to make sure that that availability details are published to the uh, OBI directory. And the performance aspect is request response times, and to make sure that there is no timeouts, uh, those kind of strategies. And next we have publication of statistics. This is, I think, to overall improve the ecosystem. They want to make sure that in the operational guidelines, uh, the ASPSPO TPP can submit their statistics to take the ecosystem forward. Another aspect that uh, ties in well with availability and performance is stress testing. So they have defined bounds and uh, different parameters that uh, stress testing can be done. So how does the conformance certificate process go? So first we talked about four of the, the four important conformance pillars. So even though we understood those and we have different tools to test this, how do I go in with these results and go for the certification process? So it's pretty easy. So in the case of where the conformance uh, category has a tool, if that's, if that's the case, you can just run the tool and get the results out. Or if it's a checklist, and in case of the customer experience guidelines, where you have to, you will have to record like a video of your interface and submit it to, uh, to the open banking service desk. So each of the organizations that is in close contact with OBIE will have to have access to the open banking service desk and they can apply for the conformance certification by giving either the test suit logs or the conformance uh, checklist rundown to OBIE. And with this, you'll give a self-certification form that, uh, that attests that this information that you have submitted to OBIE is valid and it's up to date. And after that, OBIE will go through the submitted, submitted testing details, the testing logs, or the checklist, and to make sure that uh, it's, it's on par. If it's on par, then publish the results, or else give uh, feedback back to the SPSP or TPP saying, uh, you have some more work to be done, and these are specific areas. And after the certification publication, uh, the results will be available on the uh, results will be available publicly on the open banking developer zone, which uh, any of any of the interesting parties, ASPSPs, TSPs, even NCAs uh, can NCAs can log in and check your conformance status, and also these results can be used uh, as supporting evidence for NCAs for an exemption in the contingency mechanisms. 
So the FCA has uh, defined some contingency mechanisms uh, regarding when availability is not. Uh, one of the examples is uh, where in a case where the PSD2 interface availability goes down, there should be a contingency mechanism where an interest in TPP or a consumer can screen scrape and get that information out. So you can do an exemption for these uh, for these contingency mechanisms as the four pillars of conformance make sure that the psd 2 interface that that specific T tpp or spsp is implementing is on on par with uh, the stress load tests and, and uh, api implementation standards so that is the basic rundown of the certification process and publication and after that, the pub results will be so. For example, WSO2, uh, open banking product, is a, a OBIE verified TSP. We are an OBIE verified TSP, and as you can see, uh, this is the o, this is the WSO2 results. We've tested it against uh, the security con security uh, security specification version one one two with uh, the test suit version of version 260 and we have tested the different uh, all of the available uh, authentication methods and the response types and uh, we began to pass so any ASPSP or tpp uh, mainly SPSPs in this case actually in the conformance suit aspect in the any ASPSPs who are uh, implementing the psd2 interface for obie through using the WS2 open banking solution can pretty much get out of the box conformance as we have already done the hard work and patched it up to make sure and we have done the security hardening and given documentation on regards on how you can configure the solution which is built on top of a, a great identity management system the WS2 uh, identity server where you can fine tune it uh, to the open banking's security profile and this uh, this also applies uh, uh, for the functional conformance suite we don't have any documentation yet but we are really uh, we are on the fast track on getting it there but on on uh, regarding configuring the functional conformance suite that shouldn't be an issue because uh, obie has uh, taken a uh, taken feedback uh, from the previous conformance suite and made it pretty much uh, intuitive uh, to set it up with uh, any ASPSP. So, so that's all uh, I get to talk about the OBIE conformance uh, aspects. So, do we have any questions? If, uh, anyway, if there is any questions regarding conformance, you can always check out the OB document, open backing documentation that is provided by WSO2, where we have guided on how you can configure these conformance suites, conformance suite and uh, run it against an open banking solution. Also, uh, feel free to drop an email or if you're one of our customers to create a ticket to make sure that we are all on the same page because after all, we are here to help the integration journey and make sure that all of our customers get uh, the OBI conformance uh, they want. So thank you.